welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. <laughs> Hello, my duckies, and this time we're going to be having a look at The Order, 1886. Or, should I actually say, The Cure to 1886. <laughs> Cure. This game is... Uh, as most of you know, The Order 1886 was one of my most anticipated games of the year, and I was extremely excited to finally sit down and play it, despite all of the hate that came through on this game on Twitter the second the game was released. But the question is, how did I find it? Well... This game has disappointed me. The Order 1886 has a lot of amazing shit going for it, and I enjoyed my time playing it, but unfortunately those things don't hold it above the water when it comes to all the other things that it does pretty badly. Okay, basically The Order 1886 has a lot of good shit going with it. For starters, the visuals are absolutely fucking unbelievable, the performance of the game never drops, cutscenes and gameplay look equally as good as each other and completely seamless, and I'm glad that what some people thought were pre-rendered trailers in the months up to the game's release actually turned out to be not only straight from the game's cutscenes, but from the gameplay itself. The incredible particle effects, the gloomy as hell atmosphere, and beautifully realistic lighting effects all work together impeccably, and this game is my new standard of expectation when it comes to PS4 games, and hell, most games in general. Just like how Bayonetta 2 is for the Wii U. The soundtrack is drop-dead amazing and the presentation is just indescribable in most parts. I also love the story and characters in this game, well, up until the ending at least. The voice acting is completely fantastic, the main character, Galahad, is a complete badass, Percival, Egrain and Lafayette I thought were a cool bunch of bunnies, there's tons of intrigue and deception in the story, I was extremely invested and entertained from start to finish, despite the obviously sequel-baited ending that left a lot of shit unanswered, hate it when that happens, and the fact that this all takes place in an alternate reality London in 1886 makes me feel warm and giddy, because as a setting I completely adore Victorian London for its filthiness, darkness and constant foreboding aura. And the way this game captures that setting and throws in different historical figures like Nikola Tesla working on advanced weaponry and steampunk high-tech gadgets, along with the awesome shit like King Arthur's nice drinking water from the Holy Grail to live for hundreds of years, made me completely love the lore and visual style all around. Also, whenever there is proper gameplay, the third-person gunplay is some of the best feeling and tightest I've personally ever experienced. The gunfights are always fast-paced, intense, dynamic, flashy, and the sounds and feedback you get from the larger-than-life high-tech yet Victorian weaponry is unbelievably satisfying. I also liked how where there were a few quick-time events which are annoying, luckily there weren't actually as many as some people made out to be, and some of them incorporated actually looking around and grabbing or using items within a time limit, which I found to be much more interesting and engaging than just hitting buttons before running out of time. Would have liked to have actually played more of these parts, but whatever. Yes, this is all well and good, but however, the thing with the order is that it's a very specific type of game made for a very specific type of gamer. If you're somebody who doesn't enjoy quote unquote cinematic games and believes the two should never ever mix, then this game is not, and I repeat, not for you, because as far as I'm concerned, it's just a difference in taste. It's a genre of game nowadays. If you don't like this kind of merging, do not buy this game. Yes, I know that this review is a little bit late, but hopefully I've saved a few bucks for people by explaining that. Saying that, however, I'm gonna be fair now, because as a cinematic game, this game is nothing spectacular. I adore games like Heavy Rain and love games with long ass cutscenes like Metal Gear Solid, but the amount of actual gameplay and player input in this game is pretty lacking. The third-person gunplay that is in this game is fucking awesome, but these moments aren't as often as I'd like them to be. And wherever there are atmospheric exploration scenes that allow you to talk to people, examine objects, and find hidden items, these parts of the gameplay are extremely restrictive. Exploration is not rewarding to the player at all. You can't find any special or rare guns, anything to collect. Most examinable objects are completely and utterly fucking pointless, and every scene that the game allows you to explore is extremely restrictive and linear. Unless you care about an extremely small amount of readable articles and audio diaries to further the plot and get you two PSN trophies, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to actually explore in this game, and the areas aren't anywhere big enough to be considered explorable anyway. And so that basically means that any scene where you aren't shooting or watching a cutscene is literally you just walking from A to B. You can't get lost because of the linear paths, there's nothing of much point to find, there's no difficult platforming or interesting puzzle solving, it's just walking. Say what you want about cinematic games, guys, but at least the better cinematic games out there give you puzzles to solve, different moral choices to affect the plot, non-linear areas to explore, optional things to find, multiple endings to cater replayability, you know, almost point-and-click adventure game aspects thrown into a 3D world, which is why I love Heavy Rain so much. And The Order tries to blend cinematics and gameplay in a similar kind of style, but instead gives you little replayability, nothing worthwhile to search for, no room to explore around, and an extremely restrictive and linear experience that almost makes you wonder why the parts of the game that have no gunplay aren't just bridged with more cutscenes so you can watch it happen instead of just walking and doing fucking nothing. If I throw my opinion to this as a cinematic game, then the plot and characters I thought were fantastic apart from the ending, and the presentation is some of the most polished and incredible I've seen on a console, especially in the splicing between gameplay and cutscenes, but the actual gameplay that allows the player to affect the plot by their own actions, exploration and skill are nearly non-existent except for when the gunplay comes into action, then the game becomes fucking awesome. If only the bridging gameplay scenes had more things to do in them, more puzzles, platforming, extra things to find, make it feel more uncharted, then I would say that this would be an awesome cinematic game with shooting elements, but as it is now, it needed a little bit more meat to its bones, because even though I found the shooting excellent, there isn't enough of it here to pull it through all the slow as fuck doing nothing walking scenes, which take up hours worth of a game that lasted only seven hours for me to begin with. Although luckily, the last third of this game, I have to admit, I personally found fucking great. I'm at least a little bit happy that the slowest fuck scenes in the early parts of the game were worth it for the bombastic, engaging, tension building, and pretty tricky ending scenes. Well, you know, apart from the actual plot ending and the copy paste boss fight. But if the rest of the game played out like the last third and then added a lot more meat to the non shooting parts, I'd be saying a lot more positive things than I'm saying right now. I can sum this video up by saying that if you don't like cinematic games, you won't enjoy this game because you'll only wish it was actually a movie. 
if, however, like me, you do enjoy these kinds of cinematic games, then you may enjoy this game because I still liked it. But for God's sake, wait for a price drop or rent the game first because for what it actually offers as a cinematic game, it really isn't the best in its field, despite how I love the gunfights and how the last third of the gameplay pulled the game through for me. Also, it's kind of funny how out of everything I mentioned there, the fact that this game retails at the price that it does and doesn't have any replayability or additional features like multiplayer when it could have easily done a multiplayer mode only makes me that little more disappointed. But hey, if my issues with this game could be ironed up by an obvious sequel, I could easily get down with this new IP because I love the universe it gave me, the gorgeous presentation, and the high potential in the combat elements. Consider me hooked and consider me interested to see more done with the series and ideas. It's just a shame that I really wanted to love this game and yet it didn't quite deliver for me. I wanted to love this game. I really did. But even though I like this game, I can't let that get in the way of looking at it when comparing it to other games of its similar kind of style. So, my final rating for The Order 1886 is a right bang dot in the middle, 5 out of 10. And that is after the price goes down. Hello everybody and thanks so much for watching my fast talking review of The Order 1886. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for this video and subscribing to my channel because I upload two videos every single week. You know, except when things sometimes go wrong, but I always, I always try and get the videos out as, as good as I can. Or you know, if I'm, on, if I'm on holiday or I'm ill or something, that's always something to consider. But either way, so yeah, in the description um, you'll find all my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, I'm trying to stream as much as I can. And You'll also find my Games Grabber collection down there, so if you want to see what games I'm buying, what games are on my shelves, what games I'm playing right this second, updated daily, then just go on into that link in the description and you'll find everything you want to see. Oh, it's also got all my equipment that I use for videos in there, so that's always worth a look. And as always, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. <laughs>